Thank the gentleman. I, I have a couple. Form just... be suspended. Without objection. Mr. President, members of the Senate, as chairman of the Judiciary Committee, I've mentioned publicly that I'm open to certain federally, federal sentencing or prison reforms. But I've tried to make it very clear that I'm very opposed to others. So today, I would like to address the realities of drug sentencing in the federal criminal justice system. I do so because there are many myths that surround the topic. The myth is that there are thousands of low-level drug offenders, like people smoking marijuana, in federal prison for very long terms. This is supposed to mean a waste of federal tax dollars, overcrowding, and unfairness to people who should not be in prison. These myths are often used to justify lenient and, frankly, dangerous sentencing proposals here in the United States Senate. One of those proposals is the so-called Smarter Sentencing Act. It's time to set the record straight. That's why I'm here. It's important to know how many people are in federal prison for drug possession, who they are, and why they are there in prison. Then it will be clear why it is unwise to make wholesale, one-way, lenient changes in drug sentencing. In fiscal year 2013, the most recent year that we have statistics, according to the United States Sentencing Commission, there were 2,332 drug possession cases in the federal prison. Almost 94 percent involved marijuana. More than 86 percent were against non-citizens. 88 percent of the cases arose along the southwest border. So it is clear why so many non-citizens were charged. And federal drug possessors were rarely prosecuted for small quantities. The median amount of drug possession in these southwest border cases, which are 88 percent of the federal drug possession cases, was about 48 pounds. Now understand, we're not talking about a few ounces of possession of marijuana, the average 48 pounds. Can you imagine being in possession of 48 pounds of illegal drugs? These are not then low-level, casual offenders by any stretch of the imagination. Moreover, well over 90 percent of the drug possession cases are along the southwest border. So more than 80 percent of all federal drug possession cases were brought in the state of Arizona. In that district, the United States Attorney will agree to charge a drug trafficker with only drug possession if the offender is a first-time offender who acted only as a courier. Again, the medium quantity of the amount of possession is 48 pounds, and many who actually committed trafficking there are charged only with mere drug possession. Since 88 percent of all federal drug possession cases derived from the southwest border, only 270 simple drug possession cases arose anywhere else in the United States. So get this, please. The odds of an American being subject to a federal prosecution for drug possession in any given year are less than one in a million. It is also imperative to remember that mandatory minimum sentences are not an issue in these cases. The average federal sentence for drug possession is five months. 
That's only five months. I say that for emphasis. Not the years of imprisonment. Some of the proponents of lenient sentencing would have you believe. And the brevity of federal drug possession sentences is emphasized by how in the vast majority of these cases, the median amount of drugs at issue is 48 pounds. In the 270 cases not along the border, the median amount of drugs the offender possessed was only four grams. The average sentence was one and three tenths months. And most of these convicted were sentenced to probation. So there is no basis whatsoever to advocate change in federal mandatory minimum sentencing laws based on drug possession cases, since they're not subject to such mandatory minimums. Anyone who raises drug possession as an argument against federal mandatory minimum sentences then is using a stalking horse to lower sentences for much more serious offenders. Now, there is no separate federal offense for what you call the possession with intent to distribute. Those who possessed with that intent are treated the same as those who distribute. So we need to look at drug distribution sentences in the federal system as well. Drug trafficking cases are sometimes subject to mandatory minimum sentences. For instance, just under half of all drug courier offenders were subject to mandatory minimum sentences, but under 10% but under 10% were subject to mandatory minimum sentences at the time of their sentencing. There are two main reasons why so few of these offenders are actually sentenced to a mandatory minimum. The first is they may fall within the safety valve that Congress has enacted to prevent mandatory minimum sentences from applying to low-level, first-time drug offenders. Or second, they may have provided substantial assistance to prosecutors in fingering high-level offenders in a drug conspiracy. Now, that is an intended goal of current federal sentencing policy, to put pressure on defendants to cooperate in exchange for lower sentence so that evidence against more responsible criminals can be attained. As a result, even for drug couriers, the average sentence is 39 months. Now that seems to be an appropriate level. We are not sending huge numbers of nonviolent drug offenders to federal prison under lengthy mandatory minimum sentences. So, I want to make it very clear. This is the biggest sentencing myth of them all. When federal drug sentencing is discussed, we need then to keep in mind the facts. There are hardly any nonviolent drug offending Americans in federal prison for mere drug possession. The quantities of drugs underlying the vast majority of federal possession cases are high and sentences are fair. For drug courier distribution cases, only 10% of offenders are subject to mandatory minimum sentences at the time of sentencing. So I hope you will be on notice and be on guard. Don't let anyone tell you that federal mandatory minimum sentences are putting large number of nonviolent offenders in jail for long periods of time at great taxpayer expense. Don't let anyone tell you 
that such offenders are the reason for the increase in federal drug prisoners over the years. Don't let anyone tell you that harsh mandatory sentences are low-level, nonviolent offenders are decimating various communities. Apart from the clear evidence from Sentencing Commission regarding federal drug offenders, I want to draw attention to the responses to questions from witnesses before our Judiciary Committee just this month. Testifying before the committee, Milwaukee County Sheriff David A. Clark, Jr. stated, quote, federal mandatory minimum sentences have struck terror into the hearts of career criminals and have provided longer periods of respite from the impoverished and crime-riddled communities that can least afford their return, end of quote. The sheriff said that he feared the effect in his inner city community of changing federal drug mandatory minimum sentences. Now, I've told my colleagues that I'm going to be open to lowering some federal mandatory minimum sentences, but only where specific situations may warrant that and if we can add or raise new ones for such offenses as arms, export control violations, financial crimes, and child pornography possessions. Those three categories do not have to be extremely long sentences uh, under present law. But too many judges are systematically sentencing these offenders to probation. And especially when the Supreme Court has taken away any other means of making sure judges do not let these offenders walk, mandatory minimum sentences are the only way that Congress can require that these offenders serve any time at all. So I'm trying to inform my Senate colleagues through the use of facts. We, and doing that, by looking at the facts, we will not make unwise and dangerous changes to our federal sentencing laws. So I ask my colleagues just to stick to the facts and avoid repeating myths. And I pointed those myths out. It is a myth to say that sentences for drug possession and nonviolent offenders justify Smarter Sentencing Act. That bill does not apply to possession at all. Many drug offenses necessarily involve violence. Drug conspiracies operate with the threat or the use of force. And whatever the offense charged, if the offender has a history of violent crime, he is a violent offender, and the sentence will and should reflect that fact. It is a myth to say that the Smarter Sentencing Act would save money. All it would do is shift costs from incarceration of the victims who bear the cost of the crimes that earlier released offenders would commit. That is one of the reasons the bill is dangerous. Congressional Budget Office also says that it would add billions of dollars in mandatory spending regardless of what upfront discretionary savings there may be. So I would ask my colleagues to get this. It is a fact that the Smarter Sentencing Act would cut sentences for a range of heroin offenses, including importation, including dealing, while the entire nation is in the midst of a heroin epidemic and a rising number of deaths from heroin overdoses. I would ask my colleagues to get this. It is a fact from the heads of the FBI 
and the Drug Enforcement Agency and federal police organizations that mandatory minimum sentences spur cooperation from defendants and enable successful prosecution of high-level drug criminals who cause most of the tremendous harm. And that includes cooperation from defendants charged with narco-terrorism. I would ask my colleagues to get this. It is a fact that the so-called Smarter Sentencing Act would cut in half the mandatory minimum sentences that Congress put in place for distributing drugs to benefit terrorists or terrorist organizations. And it would cut in half the mandatory minimum sentences for members of Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or Hezbollah who deal drugs that fund terrorism. That would mean less cooperation to bring charges of narco-terrorism, get terrorists off the streets, and obtain intelligence to help prevent future attacks. As President Obama's own United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York has remarked, quote, there is a growing nexus between drug trafficking and terrorism, a threat that increasingly poses a clear and present danger to our national security, end of quote. So I ask my colleagues to get this. It is a fact that the so-called Smarter Sentencing Act is dangerous not only because of its effect on increased crime and victimization, but on national security as well. I yield the floor and suggest the absence of a quorum.